let's talk about reduction pruning. Yeah. Specify a specify a, a small amount when the tree's got to be pruned. Uh, if you specify, we're we're working on the outer third of the canopy. Get people out of the rut of climbing in there and gutting out the middle and calling it a pretty tree. We got to think in terms of making trees fit their spaces and uh, and correct their overextension because we're taking forest trees, growing them in the open. They get these heavy ends, they break. So overextension is just as much of a defect as any of the other on the defect list. It really should be something that we look at and think of correcting early on before the damage. So that's reduction pruning. Nice. Yeah. Let's go into a little more detail then. Well, the myth is that the removal cut is better than a reduction cut because there's this stuff at the base called the branch protection zone that doesn't exist further out the branch at the laterals. That's the worst myth that's ever been uh, promoted, and that's just a, a misreading. It's an oversimplification and an over uh, a generalization from Shigo's work. We pulled one rule of thumb out of a 300-page book, and we've been limping along on it ever since. Uh, the same uh, compacted xylem, the same uh, callus, the same meristematic tissue, all the stuff that makes a branch protection zone is equally present at the nodes further out the branch and not at the origin. We really have to look at what Duja Siefkin did uh, with his Hamburg pruning and found that uh, we have to avoid making cuts bigger than four inches on any species and really think in terms of reducing branches instead of removing them we got way too many hollow trunks, way too many weakened trees as a result of people making the proper collar cut when it leaves a big wound that won't close. We have to get out of the mindset of thinking about the relative size of the remaining lateral and into the mindset of the less wounding is better, the less exposed heartwood is better. Due to the emphasis put on making proper pruning cuts known as target cuts, as taught by Dr. Alex Shigo, there has been much emphasis put on where to make a pruning cut while the importance of the size of the cut has been largely marginalized. Large limbs over four inches in diameter do not compartmentalize well. The resulting decay will often cause failure of the entire tree above the decay. The time lag between when a bad cut is made and when a tree fails can be measured in decades. Because of this time lag, uninformed arborists are not held accountable for the damage they have done. Large limbs often do not have clear visible indications of exact proper places to make a target cut. In cases where the target is unclear, it is better to err by cutting outside the target. Accidentally cutting into the branch protection zone does irreparable harm. Unfortunately, Shago taught that arborists should always strive for perfect target cuts, a goal that is neither practical, helpful, or achievable. And the uh, U.S. Uh, Forest Service has it right in their urban forest strike team when they go out and assessing damaged trees. They look at the amount of heartwood that's exposed as a criterion for uh, the amount of damage in the tree. They don't look at the size of the remaining uh, laterals. It's, uh, it's how the tree can respond to the damage, and heartwood doesn't respond, so you don't get closure. Any cut bigger than four inches uh, really needs to be rethought and uh, look for a plan B on that. Well, let's get specific. Any cut on the main stem or one of the main stems, but a reduction pruning cut over eight inches has very little uh, weight to support in the future. I mean, the most is going to be as a branch, which can be managed over time. So you see what I'm saying? The distinction, four inches on the main stem. Oh, exactly. Yeah, it's the amount of heartwood that's exposed. That's the uh, that's the big deal. And uh, certainly, a eight inch cut on the stem is going to expose a lot more heartwood than an eight inch cut further out the branch, where it's at a node. In 2004, a guy gave a talk about pruning after ice storms. In cases where there were no laterals left, guy encouraged pruning cuts to be made back to a node, as evidenced by bulging wrinkles or most importantly, a change in taper. While that may be helpful, it is not necessary. I prefer to leave a stub cut anywhere on a large limb rather than remove the entire limb. 
Even in cases where the remaining stub dies, it's better to give the tree time to set up the fences at the branch collar before the dead stub is removed. So large limbs can be removed in a two-step process. It could be five or more years between the two cuts. And what I like about your, uh, your work that I've seen on the videos is that you, you go back to upright laterals. When you prune back, you try to leave the cut not facing the sky, but facing down and out. And those cuts uh, close better. And those upright laterals have a better conduction stream. They're, uh, they're more hooked up to the, the vascular flow than a, than a sideways or a downright lateral. And that's all in Harris's Arboriculture book. This has been commonly known as a principle in the industry for, for decades, but uh, we haven't been following it as an industry because we're so locked into the, uh, the one-third rule. Our, our, our minds haven't gotten beyond that, unfortunately. The one-third diameter rule is just plain wrong. In the 1980s, we were taught that if there was not a lateral one-third the diameter of the parent stem, it would be better to remove the entire limb than prune back to a small lateral. That arbitrary figure has no basis in science or in practice, yet for some reason this fallacy still persists in the minds of arborists today and has not been properly put to rest by industry leaders. It's, it's changing. I think people are understanding that they have to look at the tree as something that's, uh, that's standing, look at what makes it strong, and look at keeping it strong. And that's, uh, that's all about minimizing the wounding. And that's why reduction cuts work better than removal cuts in the majority of, uh, of cases. Certainly some branches got to go to the origin, uh, but most don't. We have to rethink this. The big uh, knock against uh, reduction cuts is that the branch is going to get shaded out and die anyway. And certainly that's, that's an important factor. And that's why when we're shortening the one lower branch over Mrs. Mrs. Murphy's dogwood, we have to look at the branches above that. Do they have downward laterals that are suppressing it and shading it out? If so, we have to go to the next branch above and around and, and prune back, reduce those those downrights that are uh, that are suppressing the remaining uh, branch that we're leaving on that that's been reduced. And if it gets enough light, uh, those buds, those remaining laterals are going to sustain the branch's growth. If the branch is overextending because it's reason for the light, and it's generally the large lower limbs, you can look at them. You just look at a tree and you say. Well, these three branches on this side, that's no big deal. But look at that big, heavy one that's going right over the backyard there. Right, it's right outside the, the crown outline. It's, it's, it's more it's, exposed to, uh, to the elements. Yeah, and it's on like anywhere from like a 45 degree angle down to horizontal. And it's just got so much reach out there. And look, oh, look at the defects in that branch. It's already, you can see there's some stress cracks that developed years ago. And, and now it's got, uh, it's got decay from pro improper pruning in, in the past. Those branches are the ones that need to be reduced primarily. My, you know, like, I mean, it's not a bad idea to do slight reduction throughout the tree, but every individual branch and say, what does this branch need? What does the tree need? You exactly. Know? Restoring tree health uh, one branch at a time. Ah, that's a good line. <laughs> because the majority of the pr uh, reduction pruning is being done on limbs that are already reached for the sun, that, you know, the cutting them back to where they're not getting sun is not really that much of an issue. No. Yeah, if the middle of the, if the middle of the branch still is exposed to the sun, then we can certainly take off the end, and uh, and the branch can sustain itself. Because it's so foreign to so many guys that for years and years and years have been taught, you know, target pruning, target pruning, target pruning. So now all of a sudden it's like I want to do with some reduction pruning. How much should I be taking off here? How do you make those kind of judgments? Taking off the. Uh, the individual branch or taken off the whole tree. You look at the, the species, the site, the condition. Uh, we've had a 25% guideline in there as far as a maximum out of the, the tree. Um, that it's, that's not a bad guideline. That's not a bad place to start with. Rule of thumb. It's a should in the standard right now, so I don't think there's any harm in a in keeping that, but at the same time, we have to realize that's a should and it's open to adjustment. Now, this is very important. Mature trees will not tolerate extensive pruning 
as much as 25% of the total leaves. In older trees, especially those in poor health, reduction of 10 to 15% may be a better option. Certain species will simply die if they are over pruned. Oaks are particularly sensitive to over pruning. Taking too much of the tree's ability to make food could start a decline in health that will result in the tree's death many years later. Species such as locust and sycamore are much more resilient to heavy pruning. Some trees, some branches can have more than 50% off and still uh, respond well. I will frequently remove 50% of a single branch when there is a structural defect, but almost never remove that much of an entire tree. In cases where there are structural weaknesses in the main stem, it may be better to remove a large portion of the tree and let the tree take its chances. Mitigating risk takes precedence over the tree's health, especially when there are valuable objects that could be threatened should the tree fail. In the UK, the uh, percentage was uh, prominently mentioned in their standard but when they rewrote it in 2010, they said, no, wait, we have to look at the, uh, the size of the cut we're making, the length of the branch that we're, uh, that we're removing uh, first, and then look at percent after that. And they got oriented to where it's the wound size that's the, uh, that's the big deal. And the, uh, looking at the length, it just looks at the amount of lever arm that we're, that we're taking back, which hugely, uh, increases the, uh, the, the safety factor. Uh, Wesley, back in 1995, tw almost 20 years ago, uh, figured this out where if we just take 10 or 15 percent off, uh, off the top of a compromised tree, cutting back to the best lateral we can find, uh, that can make a, uh, a, a 50 percent or more uh, difference in the stability of the tree. He says a, a safety increases the safety factor by 2.2 and it's the same as John Goodfellow uh, with his utility studies looking at branch reduction pruning over the wires he uh, he got assembled a lot of data on this and found the same rough um, uh, ratio if we take 10 to 15 percent off the end we're making that limb ha uh, half uh, 50 percent stronger much less likely to to fail and so even in the utility realm, they're, uh, they're listening and, and thinking of the, uh, the whole tree and, uh, and managing it uh, carefully with future response in mind instead of just managing the vegetation and, uh, and hoping for the best and taking as much as they can get and, and, and not thinking of structure. Uh, even in the utility world, they're, uh, they're aware of the, the value of reduction pruning. So where, where are these commercial guys who aren't uh, who are still saying that uh, it, it's a removal cut is better than a, than a reduction cut? Uh, it, it's the it's not there in the science. It's not there in the practice, and uh, we have to document what we're doing and uh, and show people how trees respond over time to reduction pruning. I think that's the only way that uh, minds are going to get changed on it is if they actually see. Uh, see the results. One of the things I say to my clients, and it works beautifully, we don't have to hit this tree too hard. We're just trying to take off the straw that breaks the camel's back. And when you when you take the weight off the branch tips, that's the most leverage, the most bang you can get for your buck. When that snow or ice or whatever it is ends up sitting on that big horizontal limb, the weight out there on the branch tips is, is what really matters. And I, you know, exactly. I can, yeah, the the lever arm is the is the key concept. Uh, on this and thinking in terms of uh, of length and bending with the branches and and the top of the tree it's, it's it is all about the lever arm it's the simplest uh, concept in physics there is I think we get too caught up in our uh, in our rules of thumb and uh, and kind of ignore the, the the basic physical structure that's in front of us in the tree my thing is not to reduce the top in normal trees in healthy trees if a tree has major structural defects then we try to take as much weight off as possible, right. you know, and we have to really consider the wind blowing on those top top uh, branches. But in general, when you have a tree that's a you know a forest tree that's growing in a suburban environment in an un unnatural environment, the, those long reaching horizontal or, or near horizontal limbs that I, that I focus on. Yeah, those are the ones to subordinate. I agree that the uh, the, the dominant leader is only only reduced 
per need and not as a not as a general rule because it's the ones that are spreading out to the side that are going to have the worst attachments and they're going to have the uh, the most exposure and the the highest risk of of failure so that's the this bringing in the spread is 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 more a general rule than than reducing the top which is more the exception i think of snow loads ice loads that sort of thing on those long horizontal limbs the snow can't just sit on a, on a, on an upright as well as the camera. Yeah, the uprights will shed the uh, shed the load, whether it's a uh, snow, rain, ice, wind. They're just in a position where they can uh, where they can shed it. They're and not spread out to where they're they're capturing it. And if they did catch an ice load, the force is not creating as much bending moment. It's it's mostly just pressing compressing down through the right. through, on the str strong part of the tree. You know. Yeah, it is more uh, more compression and less uh, tension strain on, on the branch as will happen with the more horizontal branches. Well, are you talking about tree work in Seattle? Are you talking about tree work in New York, New York City? Are you talking about tree work in Florida? I mean, it's just a whole different range of just totally different Sure, concerns. yeah, we, we have to adjust our guidelines. Right. We have to have guidelines that are adjustable for different regions, yeah. uh, uh, different species. So for me, predominantly pruning hardwoods, ash, oak, maple, cherry, etc., uh, on the uh, east coast, you know, I again am looking at at those uh, long horizontal limbs, and so generally, the harder you need to take it, the, the, the harder you need to hit a tree. Uh, it's because it's an older tree, and it's got these huge branches that have been reaching for the sun for years. Right. So, I mean, I'm looking at oftentimes, you know, very mature trees, some some species that are very sensitive to over pruning. So, you know, again, I might be looking at uh, you know, keeping most of my cuts one to two inches uh, out on those branch tips of, you know, of a, of a 40, 45 foot horizontal limb, you know, and, and, and that's, that's when I say just take the, the straw that breaks the camel's back off. On the other hand, if I see a lot of defects, uh, you know, down close to the branch uh, uh, union the there, yeah, yeah we're, we're, there's going to be, if I see, you know, stress cracks, if I see decay, then I'm going to go and hit the tree harder. And, and and I'm going to uh, again. It's going to be species dependent. And when you're when you're reducing a branch, you first remove the ones uh, the laterals that are growing down, and second remove the laterals that are growing horizontal. And those are the ones that contribute the most to the uh, the loading, as I observe it. And uh, training back to those upright laterals is is really key. Thank you, Guy, for your contribution to the tree care industry and your selfless dedication to improving the quality of tree care. For anybody who's interested in more information, please check out the description. I have links to several of Guy's articles on the subject of pruning. Thanks very much for watching. And all Guy's articles are available at his website, historictreecare.com.